can breathe. The last time I saw you was about three years ago and it was Christmas. And here we are. Tell me it isn't true, my friend. 25 years, I'm in a comfy knit. You're looking good, mate. Well, I'm still rock and rolling it up. It isn't true. It's 27 years. Is it 27 Yeah, so years? we had this, my management and like, we've got a chance to uh, mark an anniversary 25 years. Yeah. And then COVID came. So it's still, you know, we're still doing the anniversary because 25 is a more rounded number than 27. Yeah. But here we are. And here it's are. 32 years since I joined Take That. So it's 32 years since you and I were on Elko Pops in some bar in Soho, probably. Wow. 30 years, mate. Yeah. When you, when you reflect on that, I, for one, am just glad that I'm clinging on like a curtain to a semblance of a career. Yeah. How do you feel when you look back on that? I don't really look back on it, but, but the, you know, I'm forced to with this anniversary. But what I do feel after COVID and realising that I'm nearly at half a century is I feel really, really grateful. Yeah. I feel really, really grateful that I'm still knocking about. I'm really grateful that the whole thing happened to me and carries on happening to me. Yeah. And um, that's a great place to be, considering the um, place that I used to be in, where I just couldn't enjoy anything, couldn't see anything as glorious or you know wonderful. And now I'm at a completely different place where I'm... I'm very happy. I'm very happy that um, my career happened and it's happened to me and it's happening to me. Yeah. It's a palpable relief to get to this spot. And it, like you say, it's a huge privilege. And particularly because you've gone on the, I hate to word, use the word journey, but it is, isn't it? The light and the shade, which has been well documented. You've had the highs and the lows. Um, to be sat here now reflecting on that career, even though you say you're not looking back, is phenomenal. You, you must look down the ladder and also slap yourself on the back a bit and go, that, you know, look at what you've achieved. Not really. No? I, don't, I don't allow myself that, but what I allow myself to do is exhale and thank God that the enormous want and need that I had as a teenager and going in to take that and leaving take that. Because what could have happened is my best years could have been from the age of 16 to 21. And because I left take that at 21 and that could have been it. And then this want and need, this, you know, gaping chasm that exists inside me, that would have been unmanageable. So what I do have is a sense of being able to exhale and just go, I, I fulfilled what I needed to do, you know. But I don't, I don't look back with my chest out or exuberance yeah. of, hey, look at me and what I did. It's just like, thank God I don't have to feel like it didn't happen. Your new single, Lost, is a treat. Very haunting. It says exactly uh, what it does on the tin, if you like. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, a friend of mine, Ollie Swan, great musician, great songwriter, new friend of mine, sent me over this uh, backing track with these chords on, and the chords were very melancholic. And where did I go creatively with the melancholy was when I felt my most melancholic, which is... Melancholic, yeah. Which was uh, 1995 to 2000, where I rode that train into hedonism. Uh, and uh, it did to me what it needed to do. But, you know, for those moments, it was hellish. And I, you know, lost everything. Myself, my world, my life, my friends, my family, my hope. And um, fortunately, I get to sing that song from a very different place. Do you think it had something to do with you as an individual or do you think it was also a sign of the landscape at the time and the industry at the time, if you like? Um, and do you think it would happen to the equivalent today, the Harry Styles of this world or, 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 or you know, the, the one D's, if you like, if they'd been on the same I, journey back I, then? I think that it was, a lot of it was situational mm. and a lot of it sped up. I, I, I believe that I was always going to be an alcoholic or an addict but I just had the money and the means to get there a lot quicker. Plus, something that was happening in my life was absolutely sensational and huge and unfathomable. So I just got there quicker. Yeah. Instead of it happening to me at 32 or 42 or whatever, I just arrived there at 20, 21. <laughs> <laughs> and would it happen to, um, you know, one day, you know, you look at Take That, right? Yeah. Break Take That down. Mark Owen's been into rehab. He's had his struggles. And... Uh, Gary's talked about his bulimia and his agoraphobia and, yeah. you know, what happened straight after Take That. Howard talked about, you know, wanting to commit suicide after Take That ended and Jason just can't be in the band because he can't deal with it mm. because it's too much. So, and then there's me. So that's what really happened. <laughs> Situationally, 
you know that's what that's what really you know being in that boy yeah. band did to all five of us psychologically time will tell with one direction you know what happens to them who they are what how they reacted to it because the story isn't out there it's still still pretty much early days even though the band have been split up for a while I wish them love and I wish them safety always and, you know they're all uh, they're all good boys yeah. you know so uh, I hope they don't have to go through what us five went through but I'm sure they are in their own ways and here we are the other side of all of that particularly for you lads I used the word veteran I was just talking to the team and I said I can't believe I'm set opposite Robbie Williams who I literally had on my wall right and I'm thinking how can I be interviewing you know, I see Gary around, obviously, as well, very recently, actually, at TV Centre. But you, it, for me, that just seems incredible, mate. Like, well, that, just, that, 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 that amount of time has that, passed. Yes. You know, and I had you in a clip frame in a wall. Oh, and you. suddenly here we are, veteran performer Robbie Williams. But does veterans sit with you? or we, You haven't ripened to that stage yet. No, I'll, I'll take it. Will you take it? Yeah, I'll have that. I'll have that. Well, you said you've got the Elton John stuff I'm, going on I'm Elton John in myself yeah. at the moment. I've never allowed myself these kind of luxuries before, but I, I'm, I'm trying on different uh, different personas and feelings. I yeah. quite like this. I, I'll probably get bored of it in the next five minutes. Um, I, I think that to have the opportunity to exist in a career that has been so long, I will take and I will relish, you yeah. know, and it's... Um, if the, the, the title veteran is bestowed upon me, then I'll, I'll welcome it with open arms because the, um, the exact opposite to that, mm. you know, not being on the planet, not being around and not having my career, I wouldn't have been able to deal with. And, you know, so I, I'm, I'm grateful. Consider yourself bestowed. And I know you're hugely grateful uh, to be bestowed with the beautiful Ida, who I, I know, of course, and have worked with. I get 17 years, mate, as well. Seems incredible. The, the word it may seem a bit lame to you. Fun. Whenever I think of you two, I just think of fun. Whether it's the mirth when you're on the socials. And frankly, I'm palpably relieved as well that you're not naked. Although if you do want to Zoom, I'm available for comment <laughs> later, right? There's been a lot of that going on lately. Right. But I, I don't want, I'm not going to ask you, can you imagine your life without either? Because I couldn't imagine myself without my other half. But I do sometimes think... Who would I be without that person? Because we've also been together for 17 years. Is that something you, you can appreciate as well? There wouldn't be a reason for anything. Mm. You know, there wouldn't be... Without the four kids and the wife, whereas before... Because, you know, I used to get terribly nervous before going on stage, and sometimes I still do. Um, before they arrived, there was no reason... Cause when there's the fight and the flight, and it's going, you know, you're going to die, run away because that's what fear tells you. And uh, now with my children, I've got a reason to not run away. So I, I, you're doing a gig and you're like, well, I've got money. People have gone, nah, at me before. What am I doing? <laughs> you know, what, why don't I just run away and get in a car and then never yeah. be seen again? Yeah. But now everything has a purpose. Everything has a reason. It's like I'm, I'm not running away because I have my family and I want to support my family. And I want them to live a lifestyle that we become accustomed to, that we enjoy. And, um, you know, they, they also need to have a responsible adult, adult to show mm. them the way. So, um, yeah, everything has a purpose. And, you know, we, you, you also get to show your life on social media. You're not going to show the bits where she's really annoyed with me. And I'm really annoyed with her for being really annoyed with me for just living the way that I live, yeah. you know. <laughs> so it, it, you, you do show your best bits. That being said, we're dead lucky because we make each other laugh and we like each yeah. other. We've not stopped liking each other. Yeah. Do you feel obligated to share just if you like to keep a presence on platforms like that? Do you think it's a, essentially a, a necessity of, of, of being a performer these days to have that dialogue with people? I'm glad that my wife does because, you know, as I, 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 I'm very 90s minded, yeah. you know, it's like I'm a, I'm a Luddite, you know. There well, there were no cameras around when I was mentioning the Alco Pops in Soho when we were around, no, kiddo. Thank God there was Thank goodness, right? Thank God. But um, I, I should be and I, I should be more interested and I know that this is the new world. I haven't, I haven't jumped into that new world with both feet. My wife, on the other hand, who, you know, wants a career and wants some form of relevance and wants to be able to do something with it, uh, feels it's ne necessary. And for her, it is. 
and I am part of that. And also, you know, I, I get to do a little bit of showing off in five second glimpses. It's fun. And also what I love about you, Robbie, is you've always, over the years, you've always been very frank and you are a, an open book. We'll get down to business. We've got so much to talk about. Um, very quickly, the Netflix documentary, uh, which is coming out next year, uh, you know, they've got unprecedented access to unprecedented, Robbie yeah. and, and family. What, what will we learn that we, we kind of don't know already? Is it going to be... Not much, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. I've said it all. Sold. Like. Yeah, I yeah, was going to yeah. say, but it, I, I'm fascinated by it. I mean, I can't wait, you know, and, and those sort of shows aren't necessarily sorry, in my Netflix. bag. But, yeah. Netflix is going <laughs> to be, no, be amazing. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Listen. If you are into somebody sharing too much information about themselves in a whimsical manner, Great. I'm your man. Perfect. Um, but I've been thinking about the run-up to the starting of this film, and it's about making it interesting, because, you know, these things are essential to keep this tanker of a career going forward. And into my third act, I genuinely need this. I need that documentary. I need the biopic that's coming out, because I'm still ambitious, and I still want to succeed, and I still want my creative desires to be fulfilled. And I, for my ego, I, I still need to be able to go, I've had this idea, call them, and they pick up the phone and they want to listen. You know, I don't want that to go away. So this Netflix thing has got to be really good. It's got to be. <laughs> Just imagining what would happen if I ever called someone up and they actually took what I said seriously and well exactly an idea. but exactly I don't want to experience but I'm not, that I'm not, I, <laughs> you don't want to be Richard Arnold you want to be Robbie Williams hey listen mate you know if I'd have grown up to be Richard Arnold I'd have been very 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 happy stop it I'm welling up I'll pass oh. that on to my mum um 25 years is the album we've got a little bit of an orchestral tweak to uh some well-known tracks as well as I say that lovely uh, new song lost um uh, hard to edit that down, audit it, and, and put what you want on there, or was it inevitable that it would end up with the running order that you've got? Well, it's brilliant, by the way. Thank you, thank you very much. There's like the biggies, and uh, and whatever day I woke up and decided that it would be this list of songs was that day. I could have woke up another day and it would have been a different list of songs, but it happened to be these ones. And the tour? Tour's coming up. I know. I'm touring the UK. You're more than welcome to come. Oh, please. that's ever so good of you. Yeah, please come and, and come say hi. I'll, yeah, okay. Nod from management. Come say hi. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Ever so kind of you because I'll need it for the warmth come the winter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, a bit of company for You're me. You're more than welcome. Yeah. Excellent. And, and it was, I mean, that, that, your live performances are the stuff of legend. So I'm using the le word legend as well as veteran now. But you're glad you came in this room today, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, not too shabby. But they are. I mean, I've seen you perform live before, and it's extraordinary, that energy. Oh, bless You've you. You've got that Stones-type sort of energy. I mean, you're still going to be doing it when your knees are giving out, mate. Well, um, those stages are big, and um, it's vulnerable stood in the middle of them. So I decided to do something that I hoped people would find interesting, which is perform and entertain. And whoever I've loved when I was growing up were entertainers. Yeah. You know, thank God we only had four channels growing up and there was no budget. So they used to show these old 50s films and 60s yeah. films and yeah, yeah. 30s films. And it's like, I, I want to be Dean Martin. I want to be Frank Sinatra. I, I want to be Sammy Davis Jr. You know, Gene Kelly, Bing Crosby. And then, um, and then Freddie Mercury turns up and Mick Jagger. And you go, right, OK. And, um, and Tim Curry in the Rocky Horror oh. Show. And you're like, uh... Okay, let's be them. Let's bottle it. Yeah. And there we have it. National Television Awards, very quickly, before I let you go, my friend, you're performing a medley I'm at that, it. apparently. Yes, yeah, oh, cool. you can't just phone that one in. Right, yeah, yeah. no. We'll Don't all be phone in it in. Never. Never phone it in. So you're, gonna, you're looking forward to that? I don't phone it in even when I'm on the phone, phone in something in. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means. But you are doing a medley. Is that breaking news to you or is it? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know before you, before those <laughs> words left your mouth. Right, there like, you okay, go, cool. right, so medley, take that away with you along with um, yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. veteran. Yeah, yeah, And, um, there's, do you know what, there's so many things lined up and people tell me about them and it's another reason for me to go, oh, Jesus, thank, thank you and thank God that people still are interested, that there's still some relevancy. And I get to turn up and get to ply my wares at such a huge event. I don't want to be laissez-faire about the fact yeah. that, that, that I've been invited. It's just my management don't tell me because they don't want to overwhelm me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I find out the day I wake up. <laughs> 
Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, on, yeah, that, yeah. on that bombshell, thank you for turning up today. Yeah. After you found out you were going to meet me pleasure, again, pleasure. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Mate. Uh, best of luck with all of that. It's fantastic. Thank you. Um, love you, mate. Yeah, I love you it's, too. It's so yeah, good yeah. to see you back. Yeah, good to good to good to be back. Good to see you. Love to the clan. Fiftieth birthday invite. I know it's a couple of <sighs> years off. But do you know what? I, I what did you do for your fiftieth? I had a cheeky little black tie do with some good mates. I put basically all my friends from over the years in a blender and just watched it unravel. How did it go down? It went really well. Right. All the blur. Yeah. Where was, where was it? It was at the BT Tower. Oh really? <laughs> Hence the blender. Did it go uh, very fast? <laughs> did it did it go well? It went well, yeah, it was great. Are you glad that you yes. marked that anniversary? You must mark that anniversary. Did you mark your fortieth? Yes. Did you mark any in between? No, only the big numbers. So plans would for your fortieth. Uh, okay, will you? Do you think you'll mark your sixtieth? I would be very grateful if you put your hand in your pocket and put on a lovely spread for me. Yes. No, do you, would you, because like I'm not a mark an anniversary type of guy, even though I'm doing it now. But yeah. you know, I'm exploiting it for financial gain. Yeah, and also it probably sits better for you that this isn't a round number, really. It's 27, so you <laughs> yeah. can comfort yourself with that, right? I, I'm going to do something for my 50th. I don't right. know what it is yet. Would you perform at your own 50th? Um, no, no, I don't think I. Not un unless I was doing like. Songs from my youth that I love right. by mistake somehow if a microphone was there. Right. A couple of years from now, I'm available to do a uh, Whitney Houston a cappella version of I Want to Dance with Somebody. All right, okay. deal? Deal. Deal. Yes, You're on. You're my on. love to Ida. <laughs>